Welcome to Quarantine Kids Storytime. My name is Alice J Crouch and I'm going to be reading to you the tale of Ginger and Pickles by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time there was a village shop and the name over the window was Ginger and Pickles. It was a little shop just the right size for dolls. Lucinda and Jane Dolcook always bought their groceries at Ginger and Pickles. The counter inside was a convenient height for rabbits. Ginger and Pickles sold red spotty pocket handkerchiefs at a penny three farthings. They also sold sugar and snuff and galoshes. In fact, although it was such a small shop, it sold nearly everything, except a few things that you want in a hurry, like bootlaces, hairpins, and mutton chops. Ginger and Pickles were the people who kept the shop. Ginger was a yellow tomcat and Pickles was a terrier. The rabbits were always a little bit afraid of Pickles. The shop was also patronised by mice. Only the mice were rather afraid of Ginger. Ginger usually requested Pickles to serve them because he said it made his mouth water. I can't bear it, he said, to see them going out the door carrying their little parcels. I have the same feeling about rats, replied Pickles, but it would never do to eat our own customers. They would leave us and go to Tabitha Twitchit's. On the contrary, they would go nowhere, replied Ginger the Gloomy. Tabitha Twitchit kept the only other shop in the village. She did not give credit. Ginger and Pickles gave unlimited credit. Now the meaning of credit is this. When a customer buys a bar of soap instead of a customer pulling out a purse and paying for it, she says she will pay another time. And Pickles makes a low bow and says, With pleasure, madam. And it is written down in a book. The customers come again and again and buy quantities in spite of being afraid of ginger and pickles. But there is no money in what is called the till. The customers come in crowds every day and bought quantities, especially the toffee customers. But there were always no money. They never paid for so much as a penny's worth of peppermints. But the sales were enormous ten times as large as Tabitha Twitchit's. As there was always no money, Ginger and Pickles were obliged to eat their own goods. Pickles ate biscuits and Ginger ate dried haddock. They ate them by candlelight after the shop was closed. When it came to January the 1st, there was still no money and Pickles was unable to buy a dog licence. It's very unpleasant. I'm afraid of the police, said Pickles. It's your own fault for being a terrier. I do not require a license and neither does Kep, the collie dog. It's very uncomfortable and I'm afraid I shall be summoned. I've tried in vain to get a license upon credit at the post office, said Pickles. But the place is full of policemen. I met one as I was coming home. Let us send the bill again to Samuel Whiskers. 22 and 9 for Bacon. I do not believe that he intends to pay his bill, replied Ginger. And I am sure that Anna Maria pockets things. Where are all the cream crackers? You have eaten them yourself, replied Ginger. Ginger and Pickles retired into the back parlour. They did accounts. They added up sums and sums and sums. Samuel Whiskers has run up a bill as long as his tail. He has an ounce and three quarters of snuff since October. What is seven pounds of butter at one and three and a stick of sealing wax at four matches? Send in all the bills again to everybody with complimentary slips, replied Ginger. After a time, they heard a noise in the shop, as if something had been pushed in at the door. They came out of the back parlour, and there was an envelope lying on the counter and a policeman writing in a notebook. 
Pickles nearly had a fit. He barked and he barked and he made little rushes. Bite him, Pickles, bite him, spluttered Ginger behind the sugar barrel. He's only a German doll. The policeman went on writing in his book. Twice he put his pencil in his mouth and once he dipped it in the treacle. Pickles barked till he was hoarse. But still the policeman took no notice. He had bead eyes and his helmet was sewed on with stitches. At length, on his last little rush, Pickles found that the shop was empty. The policeman had disappeared, but the envelope remained. Do you think that he has gone to fetch a real live policeman? I'm afraid it's a summons, said Pickles. No, replied Ginger, who had opened the envelope. It's the rates and taxes, three pounds nineteen and eleven three quarters. This is the last straw, said Pickles. Let us close the shop. They put up the shutters and left. But they have not removed from the neighbourhood. But they have not removed from the neighbourhood. In fact, some people wish they had gone further. Ginger is living in a warren. I do not know what occupation he pursues. He looks stout and comfortable. Pickles is at present a gamekeeper. The closing of the shop caused great inconvenience. Tabitha Twitchit immediately raised the price of everything a half penny, and she continued to refuse to give credit. Of course, there are tradesmen's carts, the butcher, the fisherman, and Timothy Baker. But a person cannot live on seed wicks and sponge cake and butter buns. Not even the sponge cake is as good as Timothy's. After a time, Mr. John Dormouse and his daughter began to sell peppermints and candles. But they did not keep self-fitting sixes, and it takes five mice to carry one seven-inch candle. Besides, the candles which they sell behave very strangely in warm weather. And Miss Dormouse refused to take back the ends when they were brought back to her with complaints. And when Mr. John Dormouse was complained to, he stayed in bed and would say nothing but, Very snug, which is not the way to carry on a retail business. So everybody was pleased when Sally Henry Penny sent out a printed poster to say that she was going to reopen the shop. Henry's opening sale, Grand Cooperative Jumble. Pennies, penny prices. Come by, come try, come by. The poster really was most enticing. There was a rush upon opening day. The shop was crammed with customers and there were crowds of mice upon the biscuit canisters. Sally Henry Penny gets rather flustered when she tries to count out change and she insists on being paid cash, but she is quite harmless and she has laid in a remarkable assortment of bargains. There is something to please everybody. The End